Hello, everyone. My name is Deshaun Hopkins. I'm an instructional technology specialist from Oklahoma Public School Resource Center. And in this tech talk, I'm going to be talking about bottle learning, um, which is a game based uh, standards aligned learning platform. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's really good in, in terms of uh, reinforcing things uh, students have already learned. And so I, I think this is really cool platform and all of its features, uh, and at least the core content of the games and the, uh, the instructional materials are all part of the free account. So uh, I think it's worth checking out. Well, before I get into it, I'm joined here with my colleague. Um, he's here and I think you should get to know him and uh, yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Hello, I'm Kurt Bernhardt. I'm the technology director for OPSRC. Because Sean and I make up the technology team here. If you never ever, if you ever need any help with technology, just reach out to us, whether it's internet into the building or technology in the hands of students. We're here to help. And Kashan will let you know how. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, I think a good way to do that is through contact us through an email. Uh, you can send something to tech team at OPSRC. Net, and um, that is a good way you can contact both of us at the same time. And we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. Um, for this tech talk, I have prepared some slides. If you're interested in them, I got some resources embedded into them. So, or if you want to follow along, you're very welcome to have it. Um, I have a link to it. And also you can go to the tech talk page, which we'll get to in a second. But the slides are case sensitive, so I'm going to read it out. Uh, it's lowercase t period l y forward slash lowercase s uppercase k lowercase a w. Or if you're viewing this through the recording, probably the easiest way to do that is to go to the Tech Talk page. That's opsrc.net forward slash Tech Talks. If you go there, uh, it looks a little something like this. You can register for our upcoming Tech Talks whenever there are new ones. Um, you can suggest a future tech topic or tool on there, uh, and you can visit the archive tech talks where um, most of the pages made up of these. On each one uh, of the previous tech talks I have, we've done a recording and um, have a set of slides with relevant resources and whatever research that I do, I try to compile it into the slides um, so you have access to that. And uh, we have them sectioned off by different topics like uh, technology standards, tech integration models, special interest topics, and individual tech tools. So uh, the formats are, are a little bit different depending on the section. Uh, this one that we're in right now with model learning uh, is more like a individual tech tool where we just take a look at a tool and try to give you some of the first steps. Sometimes I'll do sequels. Um, where I will go dive a little bit deeper, go do a little bit more application. But this one, this particular tech talk, if you have no idea, if you've never heard of bottle learning before, um, this one's a perfect one to start for on. And with that, uh, I wanna show you what it looks like, um, at least on the student's perspective on what bottle learning looks like. Um, a lot of this stuff is just integrated inside of like a game interface. Um, so it's sort of sort of a seamless transition between students working through questions and content um, aligned with standards uh, and playing the actual game itself. And there's some really fun interactives here and there. You can access bottle learning uh, through the website, uh, but there's also mobile apps as well. There's plenty of devices it works on, works really nicely through like a Chromebook or, or an iPad, but I'm gonna swap over here. Uh, right now, I'm on the dashboard of uh, through the teacher. I, I've logged into my teacher account. I'm on the dashboard, um, and I'm going to click on Preview Game, which gives you kind of like a uh, a temporary account that you could log into and kind of do the first couple of steps. Um, or you, if you want to see what something will look like from your student's perspective, which is what we're doing now, you can click on that Preview Game. So I'm going to click on that. Um, and I'm going to say I'm playing from school. And it'll take a second to load the game. Uh, it took me a little bit longer to get in the game the first time I started, um, but hopefully it won't take too long here. Okay. 
so you can see very colorful. Um, this is, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the grades, this is in 10 and four is like a K through six situation. Uh, the very first steps that will guide you through like a little tutorial here where this avatar will, will talk to you and, and guide you through creating a little avatar. I'm gonna skip the tutorial for right now, um, but it's, it's a pretty straightforward process that will guide students to the first set of questions. So yeah, I'm gonna skip that. Um, I've already created my little guy, uh, but you can customize these bottles kind of like on a, on a surface level. You can change like the color of the liquid in their head, uh, their body or the sort of expressions. I just created this little happy guy right here. Um, but yeah, whenever students log in, they can see on the right hand side, they have these assignments that they can click on that they can work through on here. I've done a couple on here, or they can just click the green play button and it gets them going, transitions a little bit here. So I'm gonna skip a little bit of the talking and go straight to quiz mode. Uh, whenever students start this for the first time, it will actually guide them. Uh, it will skip this, uh, some of the other games here and get them straight into quiz mode. Uh, didn't quite do it for me there, but that's fine. Might be because I'm skipping around. Uh, but here I have, you know, your question that's in here. Um, I, I want to point out a couple of tools that we have, like on the top left-hand corner, I have this pencil symbol here. So if you I have them working through, you can have them uh, draw a little bit of this out. And if they're working on a mobile device, I think this works a little bit nicer. Right now I'm doing it on the uh, on my keyboard and mouse, but you can have them, you know, do the little basic steps, work out the problem, and then they can either enter the text. Oh, no, I deleted it. Oh, crap. Okay. But uh, yeah, I, I can have them, you know, type in the answer here and press confirm. It'll play a little scene on here if you get the question correct. Awesome. You get the, the good version of this builds a little progress bar up there and gives them a little credit that they can use to play games or like buy things for their bottle. Um, if they get a question incorrect, I'm just going to answer whatever. They'll play through that little cutscene, and they'll get the, the incorrect version of this. They can also skip it. You know, after a while uh, of seeing the same stuff, uh, they can skip it. Uh, but one thing that's really nice is that there is instant feedback as well. If they get these questions incorrect, it gives them a little explanation before moving on to the next one, which is fine. There's also a streak bonus, which encourages students to get questions correct instead of just like, you know, randomly guessing, because I know that's kind of an issue sometimes when you have like multiple choice style questions. Um, some more tools on the top left hand corner. Um, you might not be able to hear it now. I don't think I have the sound enabled, um, but uh, if you click on you can kind of see it's interacting a little bit, but um, if you need the question being read to the student or they just like that, there's an option for that as well. If you click on the TV symbol, it will actually have like an embedded video here that will explain the concept itself as well. So there's lots of ways to sort of reinforce students as they're working through these problems. Um, so yeah, that is the, the question part. Like if you just want them to do questions, I recommend setting like a time frame and having them work through. Um, there is more to interact with here, but I pressed exit. It gives them an idea of uh, like a summary of their game session that they had here. Gives them little post games rewards, which is kind of nice. And then they can use those rewards in different places. Um, there's other games that they can play and they have to spend their, their little energy. You see that I have 11 energy on the top right-hand corner and they can use that to play some games or I could go to the arcade. And even if they play these games, like for example, Planty Pounce, uh, even though they play these games, um, they still have questions inside of them. So like as I'm playing through this game here, you know, you still get to enjoy the game aspect of it, but like at certain parts of the game, like if I, I want to refill my energy, if I click refill, you see that there are questions um, integrated in here. So even the games still have like a, a content component to this. Okay. 
I think that is probably it from now. Um, yeah. And I will come back to this, but hopefully that gives you at least an idea of what bottles about what it looks like um, from the student's perspective. And I'll show you how to get you yourself started from the teacher's perspective. But real quick, just want to go over a few things here before we dive a little bit deeper in here. Uh, first of all, my objective for this tech talk is after the tech talk, ed educators will be able to integrate bottle learning in their classroom to help students remediate and extend their learning. Um, so something I wanna emphasize here is that I think this well, this tool is really useful. Um, I don't think it's necessarily that great in terms of teaching content. I think that should come first. Um, bottle warning or learning, I think, works as a motivation best when it's a motivational tool or you're helping them um, relearn something or try to extend their learning. I think it works good. Um, there, there's essentially two things ways that I think that I would recommend trying to use it. It's kind of like either station styled learning. Um, where students are working in a classroom and you're kind of monitoring them as they're working their way through. Um, or uh, as you could also assign this as sort of like a, um, like homework in a way, there's a way that students can access bottle learning at home as well, but it definitely shouldn't be a replacement for, um, you know, the first content uh, contact of, of learning content for students there. I'm gonna go straight into the overview here, um, just answering a few questions. Uh, if anybody asks you about bottle learning, uh, like I said before, it's a game-based standard align uh, learning platform for K through six students learning math. So you can see, you know, the way that the avatars look, uh, you know, it's geared towards a younger audience the way, um, and so it kind of helps out, you know, that there's a tutorial that will walk them through. You have ways that will read instructions to students and they'll have things read to them, which is really nice. Um, and something that I didn't get a chance to show because it's it's sort of integrated in the, the types of questions that show up and the assignments, but I'll show you in a bit. But uh, this is standards aligned in the sense of you get to pick grades for students um, and a set of standards. And the questions that are automatically generated are based off of those standards. Um, and you can focus those down with the assignments. In fact, this kind of bleeds into my um, features here, but you can focus this down into the single assignments where you can either focus on a single standard or a set of a bunch of different standards and you can even combine them from different grades as well. Um, but if you want students to focus on a particular thing for remediation or extension, I think assignments feature is a really good way to do that. Um, other features it has, there is a Google Clever integration. So if you already manage a Google Classroom or you have a Clever account for students, uh, easy logging in, you can still use that inside the bottle um, platform there. And in fact, you can even bring over your Google Classroom roster um, into bottle uh, and create a classroom in there that you can manage. It makes it a little easier for you to see the progress that your students are making. Um, there is a live feed feature, which I think is nice if you're doing uh, that station learning um, and setting up little sections for students to, to work through. Uh, you can see who is working on what by whatever account. It shows you the progress in real time, which is real nice. Um, there's You can differentiate the grade levels. When you first create the classroom, put everybody on the same level, but you can go through the roster and make adjustments if you feel like students are in different places, um, especially based off of the reports. Like if you have everybody go through the placement test, which is what all students are going to go through, um, and you see some students are really behind, you can make some adjustments there, which is nice. This is a, uh, they also have parent accounts, um, a part of the process when you're adding students into a classroom or after you've embedded them, uh, imported them from like a Google Classroom, you can also invite parents, uh, excuse me, through email. Uh, they will have to create their own accounts, uh, but once they do that, they can um, see the progress of their child which uh, the teacher can see the progress uh, or the child. And I think these are, are really great ways to take advantage of bottle learning and feed that back into um, the rest of your classroom instruction. 
Uh, one last thing to note is that um, you don't necessarily have to use the website version of Bottle all the time. Um, there is a Bottle app just uh, that's just called Bottle, spelled B-O-D-D-L-E. Uh, works quite nicely. I have used it on the iPad, uh, also on my phone. Um, so if you're having trouble, you know, with one device, you can easily swap to the other. And um, yeah, works pretty good. Last thing I wanted to leave you with before we swap back to Bottle uh, to kind of show you the business on um, the back end is a couple of first steps here. First thing that you want to do is create an important classroom. Uh, next, you will add students and optionally parents. Then uh, you kind of put the tool in the students' hands. Uh, after that setup, you have them log in. They'll take a placement test. Now, it's not actually called. It's not like explicit that they're taking a placement test. It's just like the first I think it's like 50 questions or something like that. You have them work through. Um, and uh, one thing that I don't think I was able to show in the example, but one of the things, because I was doing an assignment, uh, one of the things that students can do as sort of a uh, self-assessment is that uh, as they're going through those first sets of questions, something they can do is if they're running, uh, there's an option where they can click uh, I don't understand this yet. Um, they can skip questions on there. So something to keep in mind. And then finally, uh, view those reports, take advantage of the data that this collects uh, for you. And you can also add assignments in there as well. And I'll try to show as much of this as we can in the time that we have. One thing that I do want to mention is I highly recommend that you set um, specific time limits for students to work in. Um, I think it works best when you're doing that. Okay, let's go to Bottle Learning. That's spelled B-O-D-D-L-E-L-E-A-R-N-I-N-G dot com. If we go there and I've left a link for us here, you can see the homepage, uh, which is filled with all sorts of lovely information. You can create your accounts from here if you're a teacher or parent. Or if you're a student, you can go up to top right-hand corner, click play and log in using that information. I'm gonna log in just using the regular login button here on the top right hand corner. And it's already got me in here uh, with my account, hopefully the right one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the account, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned is, is free, so you can enjoy um, all these features on here on the free account. Okay, step one, let's create a classroom. Um, there is a button I know there are some pop-ups. I've already gone through some of the tutorial stuff, um, so it will guide you through some of the steps I'm doing right now. But if I click on plus add a new classroom, I can click import from Google Classroom, import from Clever. So you got real easy buttons. It'll guide you through the same authorization process um, step by step to import all of this into here already. I'm just gonna create a regular classroom here. So I'm gonna just say, you know, Hopkins, it's for younger students, so there's not necessarily hours, but I don't know, math, math hour. I don't know, something like that. You can give it a description, optional though. I'm just gonna put some filler text there. Um, and then down over here, you can select what grade uh, your math comes in. So this step, these next two steps are really important because this will determine what standards, uh, where do they pull the question from, from the standards that are here. So you see there's a bunch of options here from K through six. I'm gonna pick first grade because I wanna make this easy for me while I show this off. Um, there is a beta for the English set on there, um, but that is not available um, at the moment here since it is in beta. Um, if you want more information about that though, if, if this does seem something you're interested in, you can click on the English part where it says beta and guide you through some steps to try to unlock that. But we're just gonna focus on the math portion right now. And then in our state alignment, you select the state that you belong in here. And hey, look at that. We have the Oklahoma academic standards ripped and ready for. So I'm gonna select that. So this is going to be a first grade class as a blanket, first grade class, Oklahoma standards. I'm gonna click create. Click create. Boom. All right. That's step one taken care of. We have created the classroom and you can even see there's the steps up here at the top as well. Um, but next thing that I need to do is add students. Cause right now I am actually in inside of the class right now which is where the action will happen. So I, on the top left hand corner, just to give you a bird's eye view I'm gonna click on home. 
And then you can see my classes here currently doesn't have any students, but if I click enter classroom, this is where the magic happens. So um, next, let's add some students. You can either do that by clicking where it says add students about the middle of the screen. You can also do it up here at the progress bar on the left hand side, there is a student section. But if I click that, uh, you can choose to import students from your Google Classroom. If you started your class by importing from Google Classroom, you can skip this step because it will automatically just add every student on your roster. I want to do this manually, so I'm going to do create accounts for my students, and you can also have students create their own accounts, but I'm just going to do it for them. I'm assuming they're kind of young. Uh, I'm just going to create them. Uh, from here, you can either upload a, a download a template and then uh, copy and paste into the Excel sheet and then upload in here, or you can type it in manually, which is what I'm going to do. Type in a first name, give it a last initial there uh, to try to keep their, their names, um, you know, try to uh, comply with the names on there for security purposes. I'll give them a name. So, that, and uh, I will type in a password there. Uh, and you can create as many accounts as you'd like on here. You just click new record when you want to add another one, but I'm going to click next step here. Uh, looks like another, this account is already, I've already created this one already. So it's just going to make an adjustment for me, which is fine. Um, and from here, if you're manually adding students, you can also change the grades from here as well, but I'm gonna leave that alone and click Submit. Make sure you click Submit. Uh, I did this before when I tested it out and didn't do that and it didn't save the account, I had to do it again. From here, uh, it will give you a little pop-up and give you different ways to share the account information, either email parents, which is a great way to invite them in as well. You can give them a printout, which I think it will show either English or Spanish. Yeah, so there's those different options there, which uh, these are actually really nice. Like I'm gonna download one, see if, oh, I have it on the different screen share, but you can see it's a step-by-step -step process and it has the login information there as well. Um, oh, I'm gonna go back to where it says share student logins, if I wanna pump that up, or if you wanna make printable login cards, also pretty nice as well. And you can pick and choose who's, who's in that. Right now I'm in the students section. You can see on the left-hand side, students is highlighted there. Um, so if you wanna change the grade level of any of your students, you just click on change grade level here and do the drop-down menu and click change grade. It will adjust um, the types of questions that students will run across. Um, they may need to take another placement test when they do that. Uh, so that bottle can really zero in on where the student is at, um, but uh, at the very least you can have them work through that. Okay, I've added some students. Uh, I've created a classroom. Cool, cool, cool. Now, after this, you turn it over to the students. You share that login with them, whatever their logins uh, happen to be uh, through either one of the different uh, ways. You can also just click on view student logins and it will give you a list that you can print out as well. Uh, but yeah, you can use these, share it with the students and they'll log in and go through that initial process it will essentially look like what I shared before when I did the preview game. Additionally, you can share with them invite links as well, um, and you can use class codes. Um, but if you've already created a student account, you don't necessarily need the class code. It might ask them for it, but you just tell them no, and it will automatically log them in through that process. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. Um, I'm going to go to a class that I already have, and I'm going to show you what the reports look like a little bit there, because I think these are um, a really useful part that you should take advantage of in the bottle. So I'm going to go to my Tech Talk page here, click on Enter Classroom, and you, you can see a little bit more information on here. It's showing like the number of problems that are solved here. You can see how much time is spent. So this is just kind of like a bird's eye view of the progress. You can see any current assignments that are assigned and I can click on view assignments, which I'll get to in a second. Um, so yeah, let me show a little bit of the reports and the assignments here. So I'm gonna click on where it says reports on the left-hand side. And the reports will give you an idea of, um, oh, 
Uh, some of these are still on here. Okay, that's fine. Usually um, you'll have the data show up on here, but mine is not complete on here. So I'll get that a little bit later, but maybe I can show you um, for the student that I have here. I'm going to click on the name. Okay, uh, I guess I don't have this. I had it before, but I don't have it right now. It might be on their usage. Yeah. So there's quite a bit of data that you can go through here. Sorry, I don't have the progress thing ready, but I don't want to waste too much time going through it. But you can see like the problems, the progress that the students have done, the different sessions they're in the last time they logged in, what questions that they went through, what questions that they have trouble, what did they actually answer, how long did they spend on the questions. Um, quite a bit of data that's already just like in here, which is pretty nice. Um, and you can swap between students using the drop down menu here. You can go between the, the preview account. Yeah, there is a view that I wanted to show. There's a timeline on here, which is quite nice because you can see about what time that they actually worked through some of this stuff. Uh, there's one thing that I wanted to show that's not quite on here. Maybe I'll get back to this uh, next time we go through it. Um, but yeah, go through the, the progress reports and you can use this to help inform uh, parts of your classroom. You can even go through it by the standards as well, but I'll save that for another time. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you is through assignments here on the left-hand side, if you click on that. Um, you can see the current assignments that are going, or you could click on top left-hand corner completed assignments as well. Um, if you select them, uh, you can get a report on how your students have done and how many got incorrect, how many they got correct, how did each student do, uh, who hasn't done it. And so it is a nice way to get an idea of where your students are at. And you can see that there are different standards for each column, and I can see how each student uh, did uh, according to each uh, set of questions there. And you can really sort of fine tune um, you don't pick the exact questions, but they at least have the same questions within the standards there. Um, so I'm going to go back, go back to the assignment page and click the big button that says create an assignment. If I do that, I give it a title. By default, it's just a date. Make sure to change that. That way, if you're making multiple assignments within the same date, they don't have the same name. Um, next, you click on the skills you want to work on. Uh, you can search for them manually if you know them by name or you just have an idea of what they are, or you could scroll through. By default, it will match the grade that you set for the class. But remember, you can make some adjustments here as well using the filters on the left-hand side. But really, um, you select a couple of standards, or if you just want them to work on one standard, that's fine. Uh, if you want everybody to work on something very specific, and then I'll click Done. Next, you have to say what students you'll assign on here uh, because you, you don't have to necessarily assign the same assignment to every student. But if you click on select students, uh, you can click the first um, button to select all of your students or you could fine tune which students get what this assignment that I'm creating here, but I'm just gonna do the one that I have. You can do change the order of the questions, either random or sequenced. You can change the number of questions to complete the assignment. You can go from, I believe it's nine to 50, oh, or, or at least three per uh, um, standard. So if you have three standards, you have to have at least nine questions on here. So don't pile on too many standards unless you're doing some kind of like summative assessment type of deal, but you can make some adjustments there. Uh, I recommend keeping the amount of questions relatively low, like short burst of practice there, I think works the best. And then you can schedule an assignment anytime, but once you've done that, you click create and then it's done. You should be able to check up on it. You can see if students have even started or if they looked on that and when they're working through the interface, they can click um, assignments. All right, I think that is enough for now on Bottle. Hopefully I've piqued your interest in some way. I'm just gonna wrap up by sharing I have my research page here. I recommend that you take a look through um, a lot of the support pages for the, the Bottle learning. Um, there is some video playlist on here. I, I think this getting started for teachers support page is really good if, if you wanna go through some of the initial steps. Um, I have a page here about technology integration that I think is worth checking out, some more resources to help you plan out um, using any of these tools here. 
And then finally, my last page here, I just want to say thank you so much, anybody listening to, to any one of these. I hope it has been a worthy use of your time. And um, if you do have a moment, check out my evaluation here. Um, I have a link to it and also the QR code as well. You can have access to it. Um, it only takes about a minute or two to do. And um, yeah, I just want to hopefully make these tech talks better. Um, I've been Kashawn Hopkins. I'm joined here with Kurt Bernhardt. Thank you, Kurt. Reach out to either of us through tech team at opsrc.net, or you can reach out to you know the community at large through any one of these social media buttons down here. Uh, and if you like what I do here, there is a link to opsrc.net forward slash tech talks, and you can have access to any one of these tech talks I've done. But for right now, um, I think that's it. So one last thank you so much, and I hope everybody has a great day.